Yeah, it's, it's, it's because Gambia is a very small country, two million people, and, and in size, it's even smaller than uh, Iswatini from Swaziland. And yeah, it's, it's, it's because Gambia is a very small country, two million people, and, and in size, it's even smaller than uh, Iswatini from Swaziland and smaller than Lesotho. Um, it's it's a it's quite poor country, but a very much football loving country. We have a lot of young talent players. People play football everywhere, but no one expected it. Uh, between 2008 and 2018, 10, 11 years, uh, Gambia had five national team coaches, and all together they won nine matches in in 10 years. And now we are three years since I'm there, and we won 11 matches, uh, most of them against better nations because also we had to play pre-qualification for the Africa Cup uh, against Djibouti. We came in a group with, with Gabon, with Angola, with uh, uh, DRC. Three countries who are in 2019 on, on the Africa Cup, three good countries, DRC is for me. Maybe even going to the World Cup in Qatar is a very strong football nation. Gabon also a very quality country and Angola uh, already for many years uh, a respected country in African football and regular on the Africa Cup. So we were there as, as, as underdog, as, as the small. We, we, we are the smallest country ever who qualified in the FIFA ranking, the, the lowest ranked uh, country in the FIFA ranking who ever qualified for the Africa Cup. But we did that together. I, I'm the coach, but I'm supported by a whole staff, by a federation and by fantastic players. So it's teamwork, but naturally we built it the last three years. And uh, I think this is a good sign also for the future, for myself and for the country. I, I, I analyzed um, all possible Gambian players all over the world. I have now a list of 140 Gambian players playing abroad, but some playing in Bangladesh, some playing in Armenia, Estonia, uh, some playing in third or fourth division somewhere. Uh, but it's a big list and I follow these players week in, week out. But when we came to the topic of Saidi Anko, also Leon Guara and Noah Sonko Sundberg, that are three players with, uh, who are born in, in, in Europe, uh, who played for other national teams. Uh, Saidi Anko is most famous, who was in Manchester United, saint Etienne, Young Voice, Bern, Porto, and now Real Valladolid. Um, he played around 30 games for, for Switzerland, youth national teams, under 17, under 19, under 21. But also Noah Sonko Sundberg, he played around 30 games also for, for Sweden. He played for Assasun, going to play now for Leski Sofia in Bulgaria. And Leon Guara played around 20 games for Germany youth national teams, under 17, under 19, I think also under 20. And he was a former Kaiserslautern and Werder Bremer player who played in Holland. And I, first of all, I contacted these players to talk to them. Then I went to visit the players in person. Um, but it took sometimes yeah, two years' time to, to convince them because they are not that old. They are 20, now 24, around that age. Uh, they were still, some of them were hoping, Sadianko was hoping for Switzerland. Uh, he's a quality player, so he was really hoping for that. Um, so it took some time uh, to convince them. Uh, but the good results of the national team helped naturally also to convince these players. Uh, I'm also talking to Mehdi Kamara from Saint Etienne, the captain of uh, Saint Etienne. He's only 22 years old, a brilliant midfield player, uh, born in France, uh, and he is not yet 100% convinced he will play for us. Um, what I did was inviting players um, to screen them, to select them, uh, to give them a fair chance. Someone can play very good in, in a club in Europe or anywhere, but not perform in the national team because the national team is, is totally different. You are only two, three days together before a match. You have sometimes only one, two training sessions. Um, it's one match. Uh, a striker can play very good in, in England or, in, or in, in, in Belgium or in Italy. He can score 15 goals and everyone will say, wow, he's a good player. Uh, but he scored 15 goals in, in 30 or 35 matches. Uh, that means that he didn't score in 20 matches. Uh, in the national team, you have one match or you have two matches. So you need a striker who can score almost every match he played for the country. Like one shot. And, and, yes, yes, exactly. It's, it's, it's different because in a club, you can lose. Next week, you win. Everyone is happy. National team, if you lose, you don't have next week a match. You are three months not playing. So the, you need players who can cope with that. And, and that's the reason I use these training camps to invite 50 players uh, to give them opportunity to, to show their ability. Some players prove that they are very good. Some players prove that they are not good enough or maybe not good enough yet. Maybe they are too young, they have to grow. Uh, 
but it's good to try them out and then to find the final squad to be competitive and to achieve the result of qualification and hopefully also in the future to build further on the team.